Hey guys, let's get straight into it. Today we've got 10 Teams tips that are going to make your life much better. So the first thing I want to show to you is do not disturb mode. Now, if you are used to using Teams so far, you'll know that we also live in a world where we tend to do lots of Zoom calls or other video conferencing calls with other people. What can be really annoying is when you're on a Zoom call and you're in a really chatty conversation in the background on Teams and you just keep hearing this. Bong, bong, bong. Let's fix it. Two things you can do. You can head up to here where your little profile picture is and you can set your availability to do not disturb. I quite like to use the shortcut version though, which is just slash DND. Do not disturb. That's it, you're done. Teams will be silent until you come back in and change to available again. Again, you can do that here with slash available, or you can do it by changing your profile picture up here. Cool. Number two is Teams transcriptions. So transcription is a brand new service that's been introduced into meetings where it will actually start to note who said what in the meeting. Let's have a look. I'm gonna jump into a meeting here. And then up at the top, we're gonna hit the three dots and we're gonna hit start transcription. And now what we'll find is that as we're talking through the meeting, you can see that notes are being taken on the right hand side. You can also see speaker attribution. So you can see that it knows I am the person speaking and it's got my little face next to there. If Kaylee joins into the meeting and starts saying some things now, <laughs> we get a little bit of feedback because we're actually quite close to each other today, but you can see straight away who said what. Absolutely fantastic. No more writing down manual meeting notes. Tip number three is recording meetings. So if you're having a meeting with a client or a supplier and you really want to capture everything, as well as the transcription that we talked about earlier, you can just record the whole thing, audio and video. Again, three little dots, you're gonna hit start recording. Now you'll notice in the top left, you get a little light that says you're recording this meeting. You also get a banner across the top that tells everyone that the meeting is being recorded. So that's for you and all the attendees. When you've finished either leaving the meeting or by hitting the three dots and pressing stop recording. The contents, the video file, that'll be uploaded straight into Teams and everyone who's a member of that channel or was part of that meeting will be able to watch the recording. Tip number four is search anywhere. This box over the top is your friend. It's absolutely beautiful because you may well be a member of lots of different teams and lots of individual chats. And you can remember, we were definitely talking about bananas the other day. Who was I talking to about bananas? One quick search for banana, and it brings up straight away for the conversation that I was having. Happened to be a direct chat with Ben that I was having. Random. Tip number five is meeting notes. So as well as being able to transcript the audio or record the entire meeting, you might just want to take plain old meeting notes. So again, the three little dots up here is your friend and meeting notes. And what will happen is it will create a meeting note OneNote file within the team. So again, everyone who is a member of that meeting and has joined in will have access to any notes that are taken here. What you'll also find when you come back and visit this later is that it's already put in really simple things like what's the name of the meeting, who attended the meeting, when did the meeting happen? So just some of those basic things are all captured, but immediately it's all in one central place. So no more taking notes and then having to email them around later. Tip number six is to do a quick survey. So in any team inside Microsoft Teams, you can pop down to the bottom here and click forms. And the first thing that you're gonna see is the option to take a quick poll. So we could ask, what are you doing this weekend? Option number one, pub. Option number two, I mean, pub, probably. Option number three, pub. I mean, we all kind of wish the pubs were open, but anyway, we'll hit save. And straight away, I get the option to vote. So I'm gonna submit my vote, hit send. And you'll see it just appears right here in the middle of the team chat. So anyone can submit their vote and you'll immediately start to see what the responses look like. It's a great way to find out what people's opinions are on things. Tip number seven is all about pinning files. Whilst it's great that we could use Teams as a file repository, what we can do is get a little bit overwhelmed with all the data that's in there. We can use our quick search tip that we heard about earlier to find files quite quickly. But one of the other things that we can do to make things really obvious is we can pin files. So in any file that we see, just press the three little dots here and we can pick pin to top. 
And now at the top of this window will be the important files. So those will be important files that we can constantly come back to. We can add as many of those as we like, obviously to keep it nice and tidy, fewer is better, but these are our important files. If at any stage we think this one's not as important as it needed to be, we can give it a little tick, edit and unpin. But this is a really nice way to call out the key files in any one of the teams for things that we're working on together. Tip number eight is all about synchronizing files with OneDrive. Again, whilst it's lovely that we can use Microsoft Teams and we can upload and download files into the interface here, it's oftentimes so much easier if people have access to those files in their little Windows Explorer down here. Now, using OneDrive and File Sync, we can get access to those same folders in this familiar interface. So again, it can be a lot simpler for people to navigate or to search to look at any of their files. To do this, all you need to do is find the team that you're interested in, find the file section, and press the sync button right here. If you've got OneDrive running on the computer, that's gonna set up the synchronization for you, give it a few minutes to tidy itself up, and you'll be ready. All of the files that you can see here in Teams will be accessible here under your little SharePoint logo inside Windows Explorer. Tip number nine is all about noise cancellation whilst you're in meetings or on calls. One of the most distracting things can be noises that are happening in the background of the office or the house, and so Teams has got built-in capabilities to cut this out for you. Again, up here to your face or your initials, press settings and then devices. And then if you look down here, you'll see the options for noise suppression. Now, if it's on for you, it may be enabled at auto, which is the default setting. We do recommend that high is actually the best performance for really cutting out all that background noise and giving you fantastic quality calls. Number 10, our last tip for the day is meet now. It's actually a little bit of an overlooked feature, but people often think, okay, we wanna jump into a quick meeting, we just wanna collaborate on some things, so I'm gonna jump into my calendar and I'm gonna set up a meeting uh, that starts in, in, in five minutes, so I'll just adjust the time so it starts now, and then everyone will get an invite and then we'll all jump in. You can, but actually a much better way to do that in any channel or in any group conversation that you're having. So here's a group chat that we've got with four of us at the moment, up here, you'll see the camera icon or the call icon. One click here and it will call everybody who's a member of that team. We can all jump in and join the same call at the same time. Instant meetings, nice and easy. Well, that's it. Those are our top 10 tips for teams. Uh, some of those there I think are for you know, real beginners, some are for more advanced users, but hopefully there's something in there for you. Let us know, what's your favorite tip for teams? Have you got anything you can share? Maybe pop that in the comments below. Well, thanks very much, guys. We will see you next time.